And for the first time in quite a few shows, um, the Orange and Black Insider is actually hosting a very special guest. And we have former Bengals tight end Nate Lowry here to, to talk about some things about the Bengals and his new business venture. Nate, thanks for joining us. How are you doing? Doing great, guys. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, I, you know, I know uh, we've been going back and forth a little bit and trying to schedule it on the show. So I appreciate your patience and uh, willingness to, to work with us and be on the program. I just kind of want to dive right in. Um, the Bengals, uh, they've always kind of been slow movers in free agency. You've seen some stuff uh, firsthand. Now, this this year especially, they've lost some key figures in the locker room, and two of which you played with um, and had firsthand experience with in the locker room. They were viewed as as locker room leaders. At least that's what fans were led to believe in Demata Pecco and, and Andrew Whitworth. I wanted to get your thoughts on those two players and if they – you know, if that leadership stigma uh, or label, I should say, is is really kind of accurate from what we've been led to believe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a little bit hard for me um, seeing those two guys go because those were the two mainstays left over from my days with the Bengals. So um, not a, not a lot of guys left to to watch and follow that that I actually played with. Um, but. I have the utmost respect for both of those players. Uh, Andrew, you know, when I was there, he was he was a younger player, but like just just dominated on the line. He uh, he was a guy that everyone in the locker room respected a ton and um, got along with really well. Uh, sometimes you, you get guys that are are great on the field, but not necessarily great in the locker room. Um, and, and Andrew was not one of those guys. He was he was great to play with. Uh, fun to talk to, and and I can see why he's had such a good and successful career with the Bengals. Um, and then Domata, I feel the same way. He's, uh, you know, he's just a big hunk of mass, strong, strong man in the middle that that got the job done. Um, and and, and soft spoken off the field, and and uh, I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I think about the uh, the Samoan players, but. Every, all the guys that I've played with like that have been like that, you know, kind of soft-spoken, very respectful off the field, but just dominant on the field. So, um, yeah, sad to see those guys go. Yeah, and I think I think most Bengals fans are as well. Again, we're talking with former Bengals tight end uh, Nate Lowry joining the program. Appreciate the time, Nate. Uh, you have uh, played for a, a couple of different teams um, in, in the NFL. You, so you had seen – um, some things that maybe fans haven't seen in terms of how teams operate and this and that. There's kind of a a little bit of a negative perception in the way the Bengals operate, maybe how ownership treats its players, that sort of thing. I don't want to put you on the spot too much, but um, is it a little bit of an unfair uh, perception that maybe some fans have about Bengals ownership and, and what, um, you know, the, the treatment of players, that sort of thing? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so I would say that it's it's not unfair in that the Bengals do things quite a bit different than other teams. Um, and, and it's been a long time since I've been away. So, you know, I don't want to speak to, to how the organization has changed or evolved since I've been there. But, yeah, there you know, back then there was no traditional general manager. Uh, the scouting staff was uh, run slightly different. And um, the way I think they looked at and tried to acquire players was quite a bit different. And, you know, I've been in a number of organizations, like you said. I'd seen it done really well. Um, and, you know, as, as much as um, you, you want to knock the Bengals for doing it the way they've done it um, and not the traditional way, you know, they've, they have had a lot of success and brought in some, some quality players uh, over the last decade. And, you know, obviously anybody that's rooting for the Bengals would like to see some playoff wins. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, you know, what they've, what they've been able to do in the regular season and do uh, in the conference um, and in the division specifically over the last couple of years, you know, shows that they're on the right path. Um, but you have to wonder, you know, if they did have some of the, the traditional, um, you know, scouting staff, player personnel uh, structures in place if, if they couldn't even go further. Nate, this is Scott Schultz. I have a uh, question. I, I, now, I, I read on the internet you grew up in Indianapolis, so obviously it's true. 
because we know everything on the internet is 100 percent accurate. <laughs> that one is fact. Uh, which, it's not an alternative fact. That is a fact. <laughs> and I find that interesting because that's actually fairly close to where I live, uh, which is north of Cincinnati a little bit. So maybe an hour or so east of where you grew up. So my question, something I was wondering was um, you were drafted. So obviously you were a very good player. You look like you're still in shape, obviously a very you know athletic uh, guy. So uh, going to the University of Yale uh, or Yale University, I'm not sure if I have it backwards or not. Um, but you obviously passed a whole bunch of Big Ten schools, Ohio State, um, you know, Penn State, Michigan, passing a lot of other schools. What was it about Yale and the recruiting process that kind of led you uh, to, to the Bulldogs? Yeah. Uh, so my, coming out of high school, I, I played for a team in Indianapolis that we had. I mean, we had a great team. I played on a, it was a small Catholic high school on the south side of Indy. Um, my senior year, we were undefeated, uh, won the state championship. Fun fact uh, is we came down to Cincinnati to compete against Moeller my, se my senior year. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, I think they were they were ranked like 10th in the nation at the time. And they they definitely overlooked us because we came down and we, <laughs> we stuck it to them. And uh, we got we got the W and uh, it went, went on to have an undefeated uh, state championship. And... I was, for us, we were a complete running school, and I was featured in the offense more than probably any former uh, Ron Colley tight end ever had. Um, but, you know, I just wasn't getting a lot of touches, and, and uh, you know, so I sent my, my scouting tape out. I was getting uh, quite a bit of interest, but I think it kind of came on late because I didn't have a really high number of, of catches my, my, or my junior year. And, and so when I started to get into the recruiting process, you know, I did go to a number of Big Ten schools. Uh, I was recruited by IU, Northwestern. I uh, never got the call from Ohio State, um, unfortunately. Uh, but I was looking at those schools and, and seeing what they offered, and then I went out to Yale, and it was, it was pretty impressive. You know, you kind of walk around campus, and you can kind of just feel – uh, the, the tradition and that legacy that, that Yale has. And, and, you know, a few people know, actually, when I was at Yale, we were the first NCAA team to reach 800 victories. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so we were, like, the winningest college football program in the country at the time. Now, people don't realize that we started, like, 50 years before everyone else. But, you know, we'll, we'll take it anyway. Um but yeah, I mean, it was just, it was an awesome opportunity. Um, and, you know, having looked back, I did have a couple of D1 offers, uh, but I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, it was such such a great experience to go there. I uh, met my wife there. And uh, so it was it was a lot of fun. And, and definitely, you know, that Yale tradition uh, was a draw to me coming out of, out of the Midwest. Yeah, that is definitely an interesting thing, looking at kind of the, the pomp and the tradition and Handsome Dan and the Bulldog and all that. Uh, yeah, cool. and you mentioned kind of going back in the history, and that's I think it's something Bengals fans uh, would like to see more of with the Bengals. They don't have a Ring of Honor, a Hall of Fame, anything yeah. of that sort. And we've mentioned all this podcast. It'd be nice to see something like that to honor the former players. And I do have one. Sorry, go ahead. I uh, just said absolutely. That would be, that'd be great to see some great players. I do have one follow-up question, uh, also tied to you. I saw you guys made it to the Ivy League championship game in basketball, so kind of changing gears. Since the tournament is coming up real soon, uh, and I saw you guys did get edged out by Princeton, uh, are you guys doing a bracket, or who do you have going all the way? I, I have not filled out my bracket yet, so that's I, I, it's, it's getting down to uh, the wire here. I have to get it filled out. Um, <laughs> Tough call, man. I don't know. I need to, I need to take a look at it. Um, I would the way the way Princeton shot against Yale, though, they were they're like I don't know. They were maybe seventy percent from behind the three point arc. Uh, so wow. I'm, I'm not going to say they're going to upset Notre Dame, but they uh, if they shoot like that, they they could uh, they could be a secret uh, Cinderella team there. So um, yeah, it should be good to see. I love this time of year. It, it, 
it ends up uh, costing me a few hours of work for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we'll talk about your work in just a second here, Nate, and then we'll we'll get you out of here again. This is the Orange and Black Insider. We're joined by former Bengals tight end Nate Lowry. Um, one one kind of final Bengals question for you here, Nate, in, in terms of your time with the team. Uh, you were in that period when the Bengals, uh, you know, they had kind of resurged under uh, Marvin Lewis. They, you know, they had a nice renaissance, and then things kind of started to fall apart. You heard some rumblings about some fractures in the locker room and or disgruntled players, uh, m mostly their star players. And you saw by 2010, uh, excuse me, 2011, Carson Palmer and Chad Johnson, two of their high, most high profile players were, were traded away. So um, I, I just am curious, is that, was that whole thing kind of overblown by the media? Did you get a sense that, you know, all of a sudden things were kind of, um, crumbling a little bit after so many years of uh, of some some pretty solid seasons in the early years of Marvin Lewis. You know, there was there was always a decent amount of drama in the locker room uh, when I was with the Bengals. Uh, it was it was interesting, right? Because you you had um, you had Chad Johnson, who uh, amazing player, but you know he he very much fit the wide receiver stereotype i guess we could say um and and you know he was he was a very loud personality on the field <laughs> i would say i would say he's, he was less loud in the locker room um almost quiet but you know he did he did carry kind of that confidence that he had on the field even though he was quiet, he you know he wasn't he wasn't going to um, quietly take a, a slight or um, or maybe criticism very well, and so that that definitely uh, I, I think did rub in the, the locker room uh, from time to time, and you know sometimes it was it was kind of fun just to be a fly in the wall. It felt like <laughs> I bet. Uh, you know. <laughs> uh, uh, Kind of going into a soap opera from time to time, and for the most part, it wasn't like that. But yeah, I would I would say that the outside perspective probably wasn't too far off, to be honest. I mean, there was there was definitely um, some some dr drama, um, and and in the end, I mean, everyone's a professional, and guys respect it, and and typically, you know, you can um, um, you can you can look the other way, you can compartmentalize one one issue and go back to work and and uh you know refocus the next day but that that kind of stuff does kind of chip away at the the fabric of the team and you know i i think that once even even though you know the the star power of some of those players was so high uh the if the if that you know team culture isn't isn't as strong as it needs to be then that that you know definitely affects what happens on the field. Um, and Carson, I mean, have a ton of respect for Carson. He's he's a great player. You've seen that he's he's gone on and done great things in Arizona. Yeah. And you know he's he's also a pretty level headed guy. I do remember you know coming off the sideline and him him and Chad just going off you know during during like as we're walking off the halftime, and it's just you know that that's a result of, of players being passionate um, and and uh, also being confident in themselves. So I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I would say that um, the outside perception of those teams was probably not too far off. Okay. But, you know, I, we could, we could talk to you for, for hours, Nate, and, and, you know, I probably, probably tap you for all kinds of stories and stuff, but we won't, yeah. we won't keep you uh, too much longer. Uh, you are starting, uh, you know, you're using that Yale education. Well, you've uh, got yourself a, a nice career in football for a little while, and now you're starting your own business. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that before you get out of here? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, retired from football. I was kind of looking what I was going to do next. And I, I'd taken over a small family business. Um, there was a product invented by my father-in-law and uh, I, I kind of got into this consumer products world. And during my playing days, I, I had plenty of injuries, was constantly fighting through injuries when I was with the Bengals and I was using a foam roller a ton. And so that 
that uh, that one product was like the you know, one thing I could rely on uh, on a day to day basis to keep me on the field. Um, you know, I could do stretches on it. I could obviously do massages and, and myofascial release on it. You can kind of adjust your vertebrae with it. So I was loving this this foam roller. I, I I started using it after back surgery, and I, I was kind of traveling a lot also in the off season and trying to pack the thing. And it was a pain in the butt, so I'd leave it at home. And my body would suffer. I'd come back. I was feeling aches and pains. Uh, we'd get back on the field, and I was, you know, not moving the way I should. And I, I, I had this idea that I, you know, I could make a collapsible foam roller, and I thought that would be pretty cool. So when the the business that I, I took over uh, after leaving, uh, kind of retiring from the NFL, got to the point where it was pretty automated. I really started focusing on developing this idea, uh, this invention of mine. And we worked on it, kind of tinkered on it for a couple of years and are just launching it. So it's called the Morph Collapsible Foam Roller. Um, the company is Brazen Life. And yeah, I mean, we're super pumped about it. Uh, we've, we've just started shipping out our initial pre-orders over the last couple months. We're getting them out to our customers and the customers are, are, are digging it. Uh, the, the feedback has been really awesome. And essentially the concept I had is like, I wanted to make, a foam roller, which has become kind of, um, it's become a staple in, in the, the fitness, mm -hmm. the physical therapy world. Uh, athletes are using them all the time to take care of their bodies. I wanted to, to take something uh, and not take away from the usability of a standard size foam roller, uh, but also make it portable so that when you wanted to have it with you, you could have it. It's, it's like a no brainer to stick in your backpack or your carry on uh, because it goes so small. And, uh, and that was the idea. And then, uh, so we, we're getting it off the ground. It's going pretty well. We're excited to, to kind of keep moving forward and, uh, and so then start to develop some other products kind of in that same category uh, to, to really grow the business. Now, where can they find uh, the products? And I know Brazen is spelled B-R-A-Z-Y-N, right? So where, where can they find the products? Yeah, to, to see it, check it out. You can go to brazen.com. It's B-R-A-Z-Y-N.com, like you said. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can kind of, I kind of tell the story. There's a video on there. Um, kind of tell my story about how I came to it, and uh, you can see the product. Um, it's pretty cool, man. I'm excited about it. Awesome. That's that sounds like a really cool thing. And as I was gonna say, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, that that foam rollers are a big part of of fitness. I've I've seen them. I see a bunch of people using them at the the gym I work out at, and like you said, it's a big physical therapy tool. So um, we we wish you the best of luck, man. I, uh, I anytime you want to come back on the show and update us on what your company's doing, we'd love to have you on, and maybe you can share a couple of other fun <laughs> stories with us as well. Yeah, it sounds good, man. I, I I will. Thank you. All right, appreciate the time, Nate. Take it easy. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thank day. you. That was Nate Lowry, former Bengals tight end, uh, joining us on the program, talking about some reminiscing a, a bit on some of the uh, some of the uh, stories from his day in the Bengals locker room. Uh, Scott, I know you wanted to ask him something else. I, I apologize, we were just running a bit long on the interview there. Um, hopefully That's fine. I just um, thought him being a business guy, and since I have a uh, master's in business, I thought. You know, be a good chance to grill him as far as you know what are his um, his target markets, his strengths, his opportunity. You know, just kind of get into the business play. Well, that's a, that's probably a show in itself, right there. That's an episode in itself. Um, but no, great guy. I, I thought that was a lot of fun, and especially uh, you know, he gave some relatively candid answers about his time with the Bengals. Were you surprised about that? I I thought it was refreshing. I, I think the people who do the more professional interview, well, the, you know, the interviews on um, the big networks, the people who get interviewed more often tend to be more guarded in what they say. Um, so it was refreshing hearing um, him say, um, you know, basically saying, yeah, you know, these guys are kind of what you, we thought, you know, you, the perception is. And that was also interesting to see that the perception wasn't too far off. The, some of the things you kind of saw, you know, as a fan, uh, the pieces you get in the media and the little interview clips. And, you know, when, when you go to spring or training camp or whatever, you, you get little snippets. You obviously don't get the behind the scenes and the yeah. fact that he was there uh, two different times for two different years and during the 07 season. And then um, again in the 08 season, he got, you know, he got to see it every day, uh, you know, and obviously the, the group meetings, the team meetings before and after and, and kind of confirming that was kind of, you know, it was very interesting hearing the things he was saying about uh, Chad and Carson and the and the group and Whitworth. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, like I said, he's 
uh, he's got an open invitation anytime he wants to come back on the program, update us on on what he's doing. And uh, again, uh, I, I believe the the website he said, well, the company name was Brazen Life, B-R-A-Z-Y-N Life. Um, so go check out his his uh, his really cool idea, his his business, and and support a former Bengal there. Um, we wish him the best of luck, and uh, that was that was a lot of fun. I'm glad we we've it's been a little while since we've had a special guest like that. And we're as I mentioned last week, we're going to have a couple of uh, of them coming up. So uh, our thanks to Nate Lowry uh, again. We <laughs> poor guy. I went back and forth with him for about three or four weeks. He had something, then I had something, and uh, but anyway, we made it work. And uh, we got him on the program, and it was it was a lot of fun. 